I just recorded a video on how to actually um, get started for microcontroller programming in platform IO, um, which I will test definitely more during the course. It, I still think it feels a bit awkward from in, in some places, but uh, I really like the idea that it can support so many different microcontroller platforms. But uh, my program of choice so far is actually Admin Studio for programming our microcontrollers. So let me also show you how we can do the same thing in Admin Studio. Um, starting up, Admin Studio takes also a while. Not well, the starting up of Platform IO is faster once it's installed, of course. Um, and now we see it's too big for the screen, so I will shrink it down in the same way that Platform IO was shrunk, so like this. Um, so it is actually based around the same framework from Microsoft. So once you have both of them installed, you have at least two copies of Microsoft Visual Studio on your system. Um, but uh, yeah, so here we actually um, choose a new project. And then we have a choice of different uh, project types. Uh, we can create an GCC C executable project or a C++ executable project. Uh, let's for now start a C executable project and call it test. And it will be stored wherever this path is pointing. So if you want to have it at a different location than programming Atma, of course, you can choose whatever you want in the location here. And we say OK. And in the next step, actually, the software will ask us which chip do you want to use out of all the supported Atma uh, microcontrollers, which are supported by Atma Studio. And you see this list is very long. And if you want to find a particular chip, it's actually always easiest to just write something about the chip here in the search field. We know that our chip is called 32U4. Um, so by just typing this, there's only one choice left. And we choose this one. Then uh, Admiral Studio will set up a project as Platform IO also does, and it does so by creating this empty C file for us, where it already includes the avr io.h header file or library, which is defining the details of our chip. And we can now add the delay.h, which I included in the other as well. You see, you have the same choice of command completion um, that you had in uh, Platform IO on Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm, I'm looking here for, for util, so I actually will advance faster here, and then we want delay H. It, it, it seems to be less clicks um, or enters than for the other, but I, I don't really know and care. Um, so replace with your application code. It also already created for us the empty infinite while loop and the main. Um, so what I do now is that I set DDRE to 0, B, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, to get the one to the right bit. And now I will say that port E uh, should equal 0, B, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we put in a delay. And now we say it should be 1,000 milliseconds. And we put in a 0. So we just do it like this. Control Z, Control, Control C, Control V. Um, we put a 0 on this position. And we wait for another second. Um, so this, this should be double, twice as fast as the last example, which is still running. Now, how do you compile this code? You do it here by the build or um, build solution, build test or build solution. It doesn't really matter. Um, we choose this one here and it tells us all the details down here. Also, this time it came out at 246 bytes of code. And uh, so both compilers, both platforms run the same compiler. So it should always be the same code size in both of them. Um, where is this file now, you may wonder. 
So if we look at an Explorer window, this one is actually on my D drive and in something which is called programming. No, it's not. I'm lost. Uh, where did I put it? It's D home programming. Okay, so D home programming. Um, here, we, here we are. Atmel, you see there's already some, but here's our new test. And here is test. And actually it ends up in a catalog called debug. And this is because in Atmel Studio I chose a debug configuration. Actually, I didn't actively choose it. It's the one which is chosen by default. And so in here we will find our hex file. Exactly the same type of hex file that the other compiler, the other platform produced. We also see a make file. And uh, so actually looking at this make file um, will tell you something about how make files look. Um, open it, notepad. And so uh, this is a script for the compiler to actually compile our program. And if you are running just from the command line without any IDE, then actually you can use one of these and it modify it to your purposes. I will put up one of these on Studium as well. But now we want to burn or to flash our test.x file, hex file into the microcontroller. So we go to our AVR do this and we go to the same catalog. So I copy this here and I will try to find it here. Control V. Here is our new test.x file. And uh, now I will swap over to the other camera again and we will see how the LED starts blinking twice as fast with a new code once it's up there. So I move here. And now it's still in the two second on, two second off blinking from the previous code. And I put the programmer into programming mode, which is actually the flash, the, the, the slow flashing LED here now. And uh, I was too slow again. So now it connected to the programmer and now it's programming. And now we are seeing the result of our new code. And what you see here is actually this is absolutely not a second. Why is it not a second? It's not a second because in our code I forgot that uh, Admiral Studio doesn't by default tell the compiler at what clock frequency our chip is running. So we actually have to put in a define f underscore f CPU telling the compiler that our microcontroller is running at 8 megahertz. And uh, if we recompile the code now, it's still 246 bytes. And we go and take up the, the program programmer, the AVR do this again. We switch over to the other camera and I put it into programming mode, program the new code and now it should be blinking one second on, one second off, one second on, one second off, one second on, one second off. Yes, it does.